In this video you will learn how to create Angular library and why do we need to do that at all. So for Angular we typically use Angular CLI to generate our projects, but sometimes we want to generate a library inside this project. Why is that? The first case, if you are developing a library for Angular that you want to publish or reuse in other applications, then you need to generate a library and Angular CLI allows us to do that in a comfortable way. Second case is that you want to move a part of your application inside the library. For example, just imagine we have a company where a lot of developers are working on Angular with different projects and they want to share some stuff between them. This is why it makes a lot of sense to create a library, put shareable stuff there and then just reuse it across all applications inside the company. In this case we also want to generate an Angular library. So how can we do that? As you can see here I have an empty Angular project just generated with Angular CLI. As you can see I don't have anything here, just app component, app module, nothing special. What I want to do is jump inside console and write ng generate library and here will be the name of the library. And essentially the name is important, especially if you want to publish it to npm it must be unique. This is why a lot of people are prefixing their libraries with the name of the company or just some unique namespace. For example here I am making a library for my Monster Lessons Academy project. This is why I will make here a prefix mla slash and then the name of the library. And here I want to create a library users where I want to pack some stuff which is related to users, like component, some interfaces, service and so on. But this command makes a lot of sense when you have globally installed ng of some specific version. I don't really like such approach, I prefer to use it through npx. I can write here npx minus p angular cli for example 15 or whatever version you have installed, then I am writing ng and the command is exactly the same, generate library and here is the name mla users. Why I like this command more? Because it allows me to easily switch between different Angular versions and avoid single global version. I'm hitting here enter and my library is being generated. As you can see all packages I installed successfully, let's have a look. So here inside my project I have a new folder which is called projects. So we are not talking here about source, source is where our application is living, here we have projects and here is our library MLA users. And inside we have something similar to our normal Angular application, but here we have a special ng package JSON. But also you can see here tsconfig and source folder. Inside source the most important part for us is public API. This is our API for the library. This is exactly what we want to export and allow to use outside. If you will simply remove everything from here then nothing will be available outside. But in this case here as you can see we are exporting a service, a component and a module. Let's have a look. Inside lib folder we are getting all this stuff. For example here is MLA users module and this is just a normal angular module where we have a declaration of the component and the export and again without this export we can't use this component outside. Let's look on the component, this is just a plain component with some template and nothing else. And as you can see the selector here is lib MLA users. Actually it doesn't make a lot of sense for me that we have here a prefix lib, I would like to use here just MLA users. And additionally to that we have here a service and again this is just a service which is provided in root and it is also exported. Now let's do some changes here so we can see how it all works together. Typically I will write here types folder because I want to have some types inside my library. And in our case here we can create a user interface TS because we are talking here about users library. And for example here we can export our interface user interface and we have just two fields id which is a string and name which is a string. Now let's use this interface inside our service. So what we want to do here we want to create a new method for example get users which must return for us an observable of user interface array. And back we want to use of from rxjs and provide just an array with some mock data. So here is id1 and name foo and then id2 and name bar. 
So this is our method getUser, which is an observable. But now we should not forget to export everything that we want. Let's check this out. Inside our public API, we are already exporting our module, component and service. This is totally fine, but we didn't export our interface. So here we can write export stuff from, and here will be lib slash types slash user interface. Only with this line, this interface will be available outside. So what we want to do now, we want to build our library. We can't really use it without building. And in order to do that, we can write ng build MLA users. This is the only thing that we need. Or if you are using it through npx, then angular CLI 15 ng build MLA users. The main point is it will build our library just once. So it is not really comfortable for development. This is why there is an option minus minus watch and it starts a watcher and will rebuild the library every single time. Now here is the error that I wanted to show you. We are getting an error. Entry point MLA users has a circular dependency on itself. What does it mean? If we jump back inside library, MLA user service, here you can see my auto import, imported user interface from MLA users. This is all good, but not when we are inside the library. Inside the library, all our imports must be relative. This won't go. This is why we are getting an error that we have a circular dependency. What we want to do here, we want just to import our types slash user interface. In this case, it will work correctly. I am restarting my watch and now we are not getting any errors. And as you can see here, everything was built and now we can check it. We can jump inside our project, here is dist and here is MLA users. And as you can see, all these files are built for us to use inside our main application. So what we can do here, we can jump inside source, app, app module, and first of all, import here our module. And we're importing it exactly like we typically import modules from NPM. So we're writing here MLA, and we have a nice autocomplete. Here is our module. After importing module, we can now render component from our library inside HTML. So we can write here library-mla-users. This is exactly the selector that was written there. Let's check if it's working. As you can see, no errors here. We're jumping in browser and we're getting MLA user works, which actually means we successfully rendered a library component inside our application. And now let's check a service. We can jump inside app component and here I want to import our service. This is why inside our app component we want to get our user service and we want to inject it from MLA user service. Now here we want to write implements on init and create ng on init. And now inside we can write this user service, get users. And as you can see, we're getting a nice autocomplete. And we simply use subscribe as always to get our response and console log it on the screen. And as you can see, our import again is from MLA users. As you can see in browser inside the console, we're getting two users from our library from the service. And if you need to build this library and publish, for example, on NPM, you simply write ng build in the name of the library. After this, you must jump inside your root folder, dist, MLA users or your library. And as you can see here, you already have a package JSON. So you must simply write npm publish inside this folder. And then your library will be successfully published on npm. And actually, if you are interested to know what is injection token inside Angular and how it works, make sure to check this video also.